Gemini 2412 is a dual multi-mode voltage controlled filter. It's 28 HB wide and available in a black or a silver front panel. At only 34mm deep with a power cable connected, it's also surprisingly skiff case friendly and its power draw is only 50 and 45 milliamps on the positive and negative rails respectively. It features two vintage SEM style 12 dB filters with a central mixing section for both audio and frequency control voltages. This allows the two filters to be combined either in series or in parallel mode and VCF1 can be inverted against VCF2. As a result the two can be combined to serve as a 24 dB SEM filter a vocal formant filter and much more. Each filter is based on the original SCM design with FET transistor buffers and featured low pass, band pass and high pass outputs along with a vary output which can be faded from low pass through notch to high pass. All outputs can be used simultaneously or a shared output on each VCF can be used so that filter types can be selected by a rotary switch. This switch is also select which filter is sent to the mixing bus and its audio output. We've added some extra features unavailable in the original design, including CV control of resonance, overdriving the filter core, and full self oscillation so that each filter can be used as a basic sine wave oscillator, complete with a 1 volt Proctave CV input. This is the module out of the box. And you see by its profile, it's very shallow. On the back of the module, this is a power connector and the bottom two pins for the minus 12 volt rail. So the red stripe on the cable will need to be aligned with these two pins at the bottom. Up here, there are two jumpers and with the jumper in place, that sets it into the high resonance mode. And with the jumper removed or just straddling one pin, then that sets it back to the normal SEM level of, of resonance. So they correspond to the filter that's on the appropriate side. You can also connect the gain switch to these pins to control it conveniently. You can use it as just a, a way of linking and unlinking the two pins basically. And there's a video covering how to do this. So you'll find the link in the description below and in the top right of the screen. The controls on the individual filters are quite self-explanatory. Frequency, resonance, and four-way selector switch, which selects the type of filter that's output through output one. The vary mode relates to the vary mode only and controls the balance between low pass and high pass filtering. In controls input level, and it can also drive the signal but it will compensate for lower level signals as well. And the frequency CV pot is bipolar and controls the amount of CV coming in from FCV1 input. So this is where you'd ordinarily send the signal from an envelope generator. And then you can add or increase the amount of envelope that's affecting the filter, but you can also invert it because it's bipolar. And to the inputs, FCV1 is the input for CV control over filter frequency, and this is the pot to control its level. The one volt per octave input controls the frequency of the filter, but it's most useful when used with the resonance. When the filter is set to high resonance mode, you can cause the filter to self oscillate, which results in the sine wave. And then the sine wave will track an incoming one volt per octave signal from a keyboard or a sequencer over approximately four octaves, 
you know, relatively stably. Resonance CV input controls the amount of resonance. The signal output one is determined by the, the four-way selector switch. So at the moment I've got very selected, so we'll get the output from the, the variable mode from this output. In is obviously audio input, and this is its attenuator. You've got individual outputs for low pass, band pass, and high pass. So you can send these all off to different locations and process them all simultaneously. They're all available simultaneously. But so is very. If you have this switch very mode selected, then output one will just be outputting the whatever your settings are with the, the very filter mode. So basically you can get all four types simultaneously if for some reason you wanted to. But this means you could potentially have the output of all four filter modes sent to a, a mixer or something that would allow you to switch or morph between the output of each. I'll run through the sounds of the filter very briefly showing it with no resonance 50% resonance and then 50% resonance with the high resonance mode switched on. And I'm using the gain switch to do that, to switch the high resonance mode. So first of all, low pass filter. High resonance mode. Band pass. High pass. Very mode, and this is fifty percent low pass and high pass. then changing the balance between low pass and high pass.
show how the frequency CV works. I've got a sequencer running which is controlling these two VCOs and it's triggering this envelope generator over here. The second of the two envelopes is triggering the VCA and the first one I've got connected to the FCV1 input. And at the moment FCV is in the central position, that means I've got no influence over the, the frequency of the filter coming from the envelope. I'm in low pass mode and frequency right down at its lowest point. I can reduce that even further with a mixer. I'll start to introduce the envelope. And it can be inverted because it's bipolar control. Bring up the frequency, the base frequency of the filter. And add some resonance. And band pass mode. I'll use a mod controller to control the amount of resonance. So I'll connect to the resonance CV input. Now, whereas normally this would this pot would control the amount of resonance, when there's a signal present at the resonance CV input, this then becomes an attenuator for the amount of CV influence over resonance. So if I put this up to 50% and increase my mod control. So this gives you live or even sequence control over the amount of CV, which can be quite interesting in a in a sequence or in a lead line or something. You put that up to maximum. This is on standard mode, the standard SEM level of resonance, not high resonance, but it still gets quite quite high. The input level will also allow you to drive the signal depending on the level of, of audio you've got coming into the filter. So this is straight from just one VCO, so the signal, the output of the VCO is quite high. In which case, normally about eight, you can maintain a pretty, you know, relatively clean signal from the coming from the, the input oscillator. But then beyond that, it will start to just drive it subtly.
take the output from the, the muting mixer. And some pink noise added to the VCO. And keep that on a level from the muting mixer where it's not distorting. Unlike the original SCM modules filter, the Gemini will actually self oscillate when it's put into a, a higher resonance mode. And that can be activated by jumpers on the back, or the jumpers can be connected to the gain switch down here, which is a, a module that's originally intended to work with a ladder filter and the discrete VCA in order to, gain, to switch on the, the jumper settings for the higher gain but it can also be used with the Gemini. So both of these two switches I've got connected to the jumpers on the back of the Gemini so that the high resonance mode can be turned on and off for both filters. So at the moment, the down position, that'll be off. I've got a sound here that includes white noise and two VCOs and it's intended to sound fairly bright. If I start adding resonance to the sound, 50% first. And keep increasing it. That's the maximum amount of resonance in the normal SCM mode. By lowering the filter frequency, it will change the pitch of that resonance. But in doing so, it will also darken the sound that's coming into it because you're lowering the frequency of the filter, obviously. If I take a cable from the CV output, the glide and noise, and then connect it to the one volt proctave input, now the pitch of that resonance should follow the one volt proctave signal that's coming from the keyboard, just like the, the VCOs. I can tune that down. So it's getting there, but it's not quite there yet. And that's absolute max resonance. So now I'll switch into higher resonance mode. In fact, first of all, that's at 50%. So it's high resonance. And I can still tune it, of course. The downside is that as I'm tuning that resonance lower in pitch, I'm also darkening the, the audio coming into it. And I'll demonstrate a way you can get around that problem by using both filters in the, the third part of the, of the user guide video. But for a single filter, that's, that's the only caveat of being able to play the resonance and, and adjust its pitch, that it'll also be affecting the frequency of the filter and therefore the audio that's coming into it. I'll take the audio out altogether. I'm 
and also because it is a sine wave oscillator you can still add essentially pitch modulation by modulating the frequency of the filter Thank you. 